I'm sure that most of us has either lost someone to drug addiction or at least known someone who has. Now, drug addiction is a complicated issue. It can destroy not only individual lives, but it can break apart entire families and disrupt communities. And despite America's declared war against illicit drugs such as heroin, cocaine, and marijuana, little stands in the way of average people obtaining legal narcotics, many of which are far more addictive than the hardest drugs you'll find on the street. Now, it might shock you to learn that the U.S. is number one when it comes to the consumption of prescription pills. In fact, a 2013 study by the Mayo Clinic shows that nearly 70% of Americans are on at least one prescription drug, and more than half take at least two. The most commonly prescribed being antidepressants and painkillers. This epidemic is the subject of, an, of a documentary called American Addict, and it explores the road that led this country from being the land of the free to the land of the addicted. Pharmaceutical representatives are universally attractive. They get recruited from places like cheerleading squads at Big Ten schools. What I'm holding is a bottle of Zyprexa. Zyprexa is an antipsychotic medication. It's very popular and it's very expensive. This, among some of the others, uh, Abilify, are very, very commonly diverted. The reason being is, again, the medical programs, insurance programs pay a lot of money for these drugs. Joining me now are the producer and director of the film, Sasha Knezev, and Dr. Gregory Smith from L.A. Thanks so much for coming on, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Gregory, let's start with you. Why is prescription addiction such a problem in the U.S.? What is it about this country that has made addiction so endemic? Well, it's, that's a great question, and really that's the question that we ask in the movie, that we're about 5% of the world's population, but we're using 80% of the world's prescription hydrocodone, which are in drugs like Vicodin and Norco, and 50% of all the prescription drugs in general. So this is just not happenstance. This is a purposeful movement to get people to take medications. I mean, let's face it, sick people are is a good business. Sick people that stay long, alive for a long period of time. So when people stay alive and they have chronic disease, these pills become the answer instead of it just instead of a band-aid they become the answer for the problem mm. Sasha the US is only one of two countries in the world other than New Zealand that has direct to consumer advertising on prescription medicine how much of that do you think feeds into this problem well it's a large problem you know it's very interesting uh, this film to give a little background uh, you know Gregory approached me I'm a filmmaker screenwriter and I normally do narrative films and I've never done a documentary this is my first documentary so what part of the process was I knew the history of prescription based on what Greg gave me and obviously we all have uh, family members and friends in this country that are on some type of uh, medication but we started to investigate and unravel what went on and you know it was it was interesting because we really got to see how how deep the rabbit hole went so to speak so direct to consumer as advertising just one of the aspects there's several others there's the FDA I mean it just you know we started going deeper and deeper and I think uh, one of the strengths of this film is that not only did we know going in what the, the you know the the problems were with what's going on with prescription medication and this epidemic in the country but we kept continuing discovering more and more and more to even you know I was shocked personally mm. and I think Greg as well to what we did discover uh, Greg uh, Sasha just said that you you went to him for the film as a doctor was there something that you saw in the field that made you want to make this movie well I, I'm, I'm just sick of seeing people dying I'm sick of seeing people be addicted to drugs when it's not necessary um, so it's sort of a, been a crusade of mine for quite quite some time uh, Sasha and I met at a party when I was writing the book American Addict um, and uh, and so the discussion started and he said you should make a movie about this and and about a year later we got back together and decided to do it but it's a it's an enormous problem it's unnecessary and it's really when you merge big business and people's health and we've seen time and time again where people's health and well-being is trumped by big business. It's a lose-lose situation there. Uh, Sasha, in the film you guys go to undercover to a clinic to prove how easy it is to get these prescription pills. What are these clinics and talk about your experience there. Well there's a uh, Sergeant Steve Offerman he directs a program called HALT which its sole responsibility is to you know take illegal drug men pills and artificial pills off the streets that's an entirely you know different segment of of this of this problem um, which is the artificial and fake pills that are out on the streets but then there's an entire you know uh, there's an entire 
medical and Medicare uh, fraud aspect that goes on as well, where people are using Medicare and Medicaid, um, get, getting it from victims, everything from homeless people on the street um, to just you know normal individuals taking these pills, selling them to pharmacies, selling them on the street, repackaging them. Um, the ph some pharmacies themselves are are culpable in this. I mean, there's just so much in this. I mean. The bottom line is the patients that are suffering um, is 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 the main issue at hand. But the illegal, you know, um, criminal aspect of it, and how much, you know, three hundred billion is a number that they give us for uh, for the pharmaceutical industry. What they make, you know, this is what the companies make. But there's, you know, a, a completely underground black market where there's millions and hundreds of millions of dollars being made as well. So the, these are the two, you know, the two aspects of the film that we explore. And, uh, and, and I, I might, wanted to might just add that. Yeah, of course. Uh, I was going to say that what's really important to understand is that the pharmaceutical problem dwarfs the street drug problem. I mean, this there's three times as many people on these drugs than that die from these drugs than heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamines combined. So, the the war on drugs we're fighting the wrong war. I mean, the war should be against some of these pharmaceutical drugs that are killing people. Well, to follow up on that, Gregory, why do you think it is that the U.S. is spending millions of dollars on a war on drugs to go after hard drugs like heroin, cocaine, and even marijuana? <laughs> Meanwhile, overseeing the production of legal heroin with drugs like Oxycontin and Vicodin? It's, uh, it's, that's, a, that's a big question. Uh, the short answer is it's big business. I mean, pharmaceutical companies make an incredible amount of money. The medications are legal, so uh, there is... Uh, a combined investment to make sure that people are taking medications for a variety of ailments, whether they need it long term or not. It's really been a situation where people all across the country are taking medications for the long term, and it's just, it's all about the money. It really is. Uh, Sasha, I want to turn to you. You know, we used to be shocked to hear about celebrities dying from speedballs mixing heroin and cocaine, but now it's almost commonplace to hear about celebrities ODing or even other people. I mean, I'm not, I'm just saying celebrities an example here on some kind of prescription cocktail, yet it's never addressed the same way as hard drugs are. How much is the media to blame for the culture of acceptance? Well, the media is to blame, and I just want to make another note. We spend a lot of time in Washington, D.C., and um, one of the individuals interviewed in our film is uh, Dr. Sidney Wolf, who is head of the FDA Advisory Committee in, uh, in, in, in Washington. And he, you know, tell, he states in the film that the pharmaceutical country, uh, companies are the strongest lobby in, in, in America. They pretty much get whatever they want. Um, they took it from the tobacco company, and now they they are the masters, and they they get so much money, and this influenced the media not only through direct to consumer advertising, but also in the media itself, you know, burying these crimes. And we see a lot of celebrities where initially reports come out where it is prescriptions that are you know connoted to their to their deaths, but then later on when autopsies come out, they you know give a concoction or some other elements or some other drugs. And not really foregrounding or emphasizing uh, the what, you know that the prescription narcotics were a primary source of, of their death. So the media is complicit. We also see in movies and in television shows um, this perpetual usage of pills through you know the stars of TV shows. Um, it's glorified. It's glorified. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Uh, actors and shows. So that that much like cigarettes did, you know. 30, 40, 50 years ago, it makes children and other adults want to take those pills because they're seeing their favorite, favorite celebrities um, taking them, but then when these same celebrities are dying, they're not emphasizing it enough. Exactly. It's totally downplayed. I'm really glad that you outlined that really well. Uh, Gregory, let's move on. Also, let's elaborate on what um, Sasha was saying earlier about the FDA. I mean, let's talk about how deep these pockets go. Um, how big is the big pharma lobbying machine in Washington? Well, it's, uh, most people feel like it's the number one lobby right now. And when you look at the relationship between pharmaceutical companies and the FDA, it's a ludicrous uh, relationship. The FDA is supposedly overseeing uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, to uh, put out safe drugs, but yet at the same time, they get around 30, 35 percent of their budget from these same pharmaceutical companies that have to pay fees to the FDA to get their drugs put on the market. And um, often people think I'm constantly bashing the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies. There are good people that work in, in both of these agencies. 
and in pharmaceutical companies. However, I think that the interests of the people at the top of these pyramids are not always uh, genuine. And we've seen time and time again where medications are, 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 are put on the market that should have never gotten on the market. Information studies uh, are suppressed. And then it isn't until the drug kills or maims enough people that you see the, pharmaceutical, or see the FDA riding in on a white horse to take a drug off the market that shouldn't have never been mm. on the market in the first place. It's ludicrous. Right, and the, the monopolies on patents for life-saving medication, et cetera. Gregory, I just wanted to follow up because you're a doctor. I mean, I think a lot of people who visit the doctor have just seen an ad on TV about restless leg syndrome or whatever else is on there. Mm. And then they're peddled certain drugs by the doctors. It seems like a vicious cycle. Is there any way to protect ourselves from becoming American addicts? It's, it's all about the people educating themselves because you can't rely on television ads and even your doctor often enough to tell you exactly what to do. And again, I'm not bashing the doctors. Sometimes doctors get a lot of their information from the pharmaceutical companies. They are entwined in our medical schools and I was one of them. I believed in a conventional medical approach until about nine or ten years ago when I saw that people simply weren't getting better and I had more and more people that I was treating for chronic pain becoming addicted to these medications. And when I opened Thank my you. eyes and really educated myself, it was a big difference. Thank you so much. Everyone check it out, American Addict. It's on Netflix. You can find it online. Sasha Knezev, Dr. Gregory Smith, filmmakers, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much.